Zach McCray here, Al, and we appreciate you coming on. Um, let me start here. How upsetting is it to the diehard football fan base there that their offensive coordinator is leaving, or is it? Well, I think everybody is pretty realistic about the fact that uh, Lincoln is a, a special young talent at what he does. And, uh, you know, he's been very faithful to the program. He talked to North Carolina last year. He talked to Notre Dame about positions. And he was, uh, I think, offered by Kentucky uh, after the, this past season. So he's been pretty faithful. I think this is just an opportunity everybody realizes is too good for him to turn down in terms of, you know, his career advancement. All right. So, uh, what kind of what kind of coach are Sooners fans getting? What kind what kind of offense? What, what kind of uh, recruiter? I mean, let's just let's go down the gamut here. Well, he's a good recruiter. Um, those of your listeners that are familiar with East Carolina's program, he was uh, instrumental in bringing Shane Carden, the quarterback, uh, this past season, past couple of years into the program, Justin Hardy. He recognized his ability. They didn't have a scholarship when they first came in, brought him in as a walk-on, and he won the uh, Burlesworth Award as the uh, walk-on of the year this past season. So I think he, he recognizes talent, and he's influential with uh, potential players. As far as the offense, I know Coach Stoops wants to, to be a better passing program, and I think Lincoln will bring that. I think you're going to have to change recruiting a little bit to find uh, personnel to fit that system. That happened at East Carolina. and uh, What happened at East real- Carolina? That, 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 that you, you all kind of switched gears from running to passing? Basically, I mean, they, they were proficient at passing before. Now they, you know, you're playing a one-back, full-receiver type of offense. You want a different, little different type of offensive lineman, a little more rangy guy for pass blocking. And... Uh, One thing that Lincoln grew a lot at East Carolina, he came in 26 years old as offensive coordinator. One thing he did, uh, when the passing game was established, he was able to integrate the the running game a little bit more, and that's just uh, a basic necessity because you're going to need to to kind of take advantage of what your defense is giving you. And when they spread to cover the pass, obviously some running lanes are created. So, I think he, like I said, I think he really grew uh, on the job at East Carolina, and uh, you know, take that knowledge to Oklahoma, obviously. But so, how, how much am, am I? How accurate am I in saying that you are describing a very much a pass-first offensive coordinator? Yeah, I think I think that that will be the big transition probably for Oklahoma. Um, and it, like I say, I think Lincoln is smart enough and, and the people that uh, he'll have around him will realize, you know, what the defense has given him and, uh, and take advantage of that. Uh, Al Myatt with us, PiratesChess.com, and he joins us in the Little Cedars Hot and Ready Hotline from East Carolina to talk about the, uh, the former now, former offensive coordinator uh, of the East Carolina Pirates, uh, Lincoln Riley, who is now the new offensive coordinator here at Oklahoma. What kind of tempo did you guys play at? It was a high tempo. Uh, There was a play sent in from the sidelines, uh, then a a preliminary defensive read, uh, a call, uh, an adjustment made with signals if if that was not the right play for the defense, and uh, and no huddle, no huddle offense. Um, Back, let me just say it's it's Pirates Chess Magazine and Bonesville dot Oh us. yes, uh, give me that yes, give me give me that address again because people will go to it from here. Yes, sir. What is Bonesville, it again? Bonesville dot net. Bonesville dot net. Yes, sir. Gotcha. Bonesville dot net and Pirates Chess Magazine. My apologies, Pirates no Chess problem. Magazine. Al Myatt with us on the Little Caesars Hot and Ready Hotline. Um, what would you consider to be the fairest criticism of Lincoln Riley? Well. I don't know if your viewers watched the Central Florida game uh, the end of the regular season this past year. Lincoln took responsibility for this. They went into a victory formation uh, with a two-point lead with under two minutes left, and they actually gave the ball back to Central Florida at uh, Central Florida's 35-yard line with 15 seconds left, and two pass plays, Central Florida scored and won the game. So there was a miscalculation 
about the time and uh, Central Florida's remaining time out. And I know there was some second guessing in the bowl game because they had uh, first and goal at Florida's seven yard line and they put the backup quarterback in there. He ran twice and uh, the second time was ruled a fumble at the uh, one yard line. It appeared on the replay to me that he was down before the ball came out, but that was not the interpretation on the review. But uh, there was a lot of question about that because the backup quarterback had not played since the North Carolina game in September. But uh, he made six yards on, on first down, and then he was uh, ruled for a fumble on second down. And uh, a lot of people questioned why they went with that particular package in that situation. But uh, and, and I think earlier in his career, Lincoln was geared more to the pass and less to the run, and I think he's, uh, he's a more complete, multidimensional offensive coordinator now. Um, give me, okay, and, and look, especially now, I mean, this, this might be a little tougher now because, I mean, with the, move, with, with the American Conference now and just how, uh, how deep a conference – uh, that can be, and that is already. Um, this might be a tougher question to answer these days uh, compared to the old old days of East Carolina. But um, give me the can fill in this blank if you can. Lincoln Riley was the best coordinator in the American Conference at blank. I'm not sure I understand your question. In other words, is there some is there some facet of his Play calling his oh, I see. His, his his particular it, skill. Yeah, his okay. his skill that you're just like yeah. Um, I'll take that skill of his and put it in my All American Conference offensive coordinator. Okay, the two matchups they had with uh, Southeastern Conference teams they played uh, South Carolina this year and Florida and uh, Florida in the bowl game. They were they were proficient at moving the ball into the red zone. But maybe because of the depth of the field at that point kind of restricts uh, your vertical passing game, they were not as effective uh, in the red zone. They had, well, they were seven times in the red zone against Florida, scored two touchdowns, kicked two field goals, had two turnovers, and a missed field goal, I believe. So um, probably red zone offense would be – his uh, Achilles heel, but moving the ball into the red zone would be his strength. Al, how has, uh, how has Lincoln Riley been at developing quarterbacks? Because the word is he's going to be the quarterback's coach as well as the offensive coordinator. How's he been at East Carolina in that role? Well, you look at Shane Carden, and I think uh, that, that Shane's performance and statistics – speak for themselves, you know, he leads East Carolina as uh, the all-time leader in several categories. He started pretty early in his sophomore year and started his junior and senior years, um, and he did an excellent job. I think they had a good working relationship. The, but there again, there's, there's, a, there's kind of a, a catch-22 there because Shane did not win the job going into his sophomore year. They made a change at South Carolina the second game of the season, and uh, Shane played better than the guy who had won the job, and then Shane started the next week at Southern Miss and, and kind of took it from there. But, uh, you know, the evaluation was not uh, – Shane didn't win the job immediately, but, uh, um, you know, you, you would have to think that Lincoln had some responsibility in that decision. But uh, I think, um, you know, in answer to your question, I think he will, he will see what he's looking for in the quarterback candidates, and uh, he will be, I'm sure, heavily involved in recruiting guys that fit the system that they will be adapting to. Last question for you, Alan. We appreciate your time. Um, this is not really about Lincoln Riley, but – Last night we had the first college football playoff national championship, and East Carolina is in a non-Power 5 conference. How has uh, East Carolina and schools like East Carolina in the American Athletic Conference, how have they reacted to this four-team playoff, and what do you think the future holds for the not-Power 5 conferences? Well, I think uh, not just the non-Power 5. I think 
a lot of people would like to see a playoff that involves all of the conference champions and maybe five at-large teams, maybe 16-team playoff. And then, uh, you know, I, I still have some questions about, you know, how TCU and Ohio State would match up, and we don't really have any way to resolve that at this point, but a deeper playoff would uh, provide that. And uh, the more inclusive you get, the truer champion you get is my feelings on that. 10-4. Al, we appreciate your time. I'm sure people will be heading over from here uh, to Bonesville.net and the Pirates Chess Magazine. Al Myatt, uh with us. We appreciate your time, Al. Thank you, Zach. Okay, yes, thank you.